So I'm not the prophet who stands here and who knows everything. No, that's, that's not how we do signs. Uh, we do signs as a community. We do signs by talking about things, by proving to other people that this is the best way to do it. And not by telling people, oh, this is the way you have to do it because I'm the professor and I'm telling you this is the way you need to do it. So, so there's nothing of that. Uh, science is different. Science is a community of people who work together <clears throat> and the only thing that counts is reason. Uh, if you... <coughs> If, if, if you want to push your point through, you have to have the best reasoning of it. You have to know why it is the best thing. There's no other criteria. Okay? And <clears throat> the other thing I would just like to say a little bit about, I'm, I'm a physicist. When I was your age, uh, I loved physics and I loved mathematics. And the mathematics department actually tried, uh, tried to convince me to do postgraduate study in mathematics, which I did consider. I eventually decided to take physics. Uh, and my main reason why I wanted to do physics is because it is something very practical. It is not the practice itself, but it's something I can see and when I work with things, it's something I know about and so on. So, so physics has to do with, uh, with the real world. Uh, and mathematics is, is also there within physics. And this is the nice thing about physics that physics, you can do physics, you can do science in the way we do science and do a lot of mathematics. A lot of uh, uh, physicists are in fact very good mathematicians. I hope Barry agrees with that. Uh, and in fact, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, mathematics not all of it, and not, maybe not the most important parts of it, I wouldn't want to judge, but uh, a lot of mathematics has been developed by physicists. Uh, for instance, calculus. Was people wanted to do, and we will discuss calculus, uh, uh, we will do a, a discuss uh, mechanics and see the calculus in that. And a lot of the, uh, the calculus which was developed was necessary to, to understand uh, mechanics. Uh, and, and so there is a very nice interplay between physics and mathematics. And uh, it is actually a pity uh, that uh, people separate all these things. I think the modern science is becoming very interesting in the sense that even biology, which used to be far away from what we used to call the hard sciences, the physics and the mathematics and the chemistry, biology is, com is coming closer and closer. There's lots of physics and, uh, of course, for quite some time already, chemistry and also some mathematics being done within biology. Uh, so it is a, it's a very exciting time in the sense that... Uh, one can again become a generalist in some way. Uh, you can, and I think it's interesting to become a generalist, to become someone who understands uh, science uh, broadly. After I've said that, I must admit, and I want to tell you, you also have to specialize. You won't, you won't net normally make a contribution unless you have your speciality. But your speciality should never be so that you do not see the other things next to it. 
I've, I've just started uh, preaching quite a bit here. And I first of all now want to ask you, do you all understand me? Uh, we are not, we, we in Africa, we don't have one language like the Americans. Uh, we have many languages. Uh, in my view, we should nevertheless all be Africans and work together and not say, oh, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not... We are all Africans and we work for Africa. I'm an African. I was born here. <laughs> you laugh, but I'm an African. I'm, I'm not as black as you are. But, but I'm nevertheless an African. <coughs> I feel an African. Africa is important to me. For me, Africa is the thing I want to work for. And uh, so we have, we have people who are Arabic. Who speaks Arabic? Hands up, please. Where are you from? Sudan. Sudan. Okay. Egypt. Egypt. Sudan. 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 And, oh, some more. Egypt. Chad. Chad. So you're Arabic. Yes. And, and French. French and Arabic, both. Okay? Sudan. 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 Egypt. Egypt. I, think, I think we must make it a, a rule, a language is never a problem, okay? Never a problem. If you cannot express your thoughts in English, say it in French. Uh, je comprends un peu français, uh, <laughs> but not very much. Huh? Uh, but there will be other people who understand fr uh, French and who can then translate it. Huh? So it's more important uh, to get your thought uh, expressed uh, than to do it in the right language way. Eventually we will all be able to speak English. English is the, is the world language of science. It used to be uh, French and German and things. I speak German. Uh, and uh, it, uh, it used to be uh, languages from Europe uh, and English is, with the dominance of America has become the, the language uh, of science. Uh, uh, there were times when uh, Russian was maybe also coming up a little but I think that is waning a little. But maybe when you are my age you will all have to speak Chinese. <laughs> so, so these things change, uh, but, but we have one common language and that is the language of science and it is best expressed in terms of mathematics. Mathematical concepts are, are a common language, we do it the same way wherever we are. But of course the mathematics itself is, uh, is not enough. Uh, you, can, uh, you can have an expression, and I'll do some examples just now, where you, you can do all the mathematics, but you have no clue about what you're doing. Yeah? Understand that. Uh, sometimes you just manipulate mathematical expressions and you do not know uh, what, what you are doing. So let me talk a little bit uh, about physics. What is it that makes physics interesting to me and hopefully to you? I don't want to make the mathematicians physicists. Mathematics is an interesting subject and we need mathematicians, we need lots of mathematicians, 
But even the mathematicians should know a little bit about other things so that they can work with those concepts in a, in, in, in a more, in an easier way and, 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 and more firm way. <clears throat> So what is, what, is, what is the nature of physics? Now, as in all science, physics is based on curiosity. Uh, you're curious about something. And, uh, and this is already happening with baby, uh, small children. They're curious. Sometimes grown-up people tell them to shut up, shut up, shut up, and eventually they're not curious anymore. <laughs> But when they start off, they are curious. They want to know uh, cu curiosity. Yeah? <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and, uh, so, and and what what do you do then? Well, you observe. You look. So observation is very important. You must observe with all possible ways, with your eyes, with your hands, with feeling it, with hearing it. You, you, you observe what is happening around you. And then you, you measure. You measure things. And if you measure things, uh, you, don't, you don't take a piece of string and say uh, this thing is, is, is one string long uh, because uh, the next person wouldn't know what a string long means. Uh, so you have, to, you have to have units. You have to have very specific units and we have to learn about the units. You have to know we all measure length with a meter. That is, these are the so-called SI units, Système International. Uh, the SI units have, as a length, they have the meter, as a weight, what's the weight? Hmm? Kilogram. Newton. 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 Wait. Oh, yeah. You're right. The mass, I mean. What's the mass? Hmm? Grams. System International. International. Meter. Kilograms, seconds, hmm? ampere, okay, coulombs, okay, uh, so that's the, uh, and then the next thing you have to do is you have to uh, compare, you have measured things and you have to compare. And you have to compare it with other things which you measured. And then the best way to do that is by doing it through mathematics. Have an expression for things you've measured and how you, uh, you look at, at these things. Uh, I must now, I think, uh, Okay, uh, and then the next thing in, in physics uh, which we talk about is laws. Uh, law. Uh, now, what is a law? Who wants to answer?
Hmm? A rule to do something. Uh, so I say, you measure with this stick, is that the law? How the thing works, okay. Uh, theory that has improved. Eh? Approved theory. Approved theory, yeah. And we have, we have lots of things. We have models and we have this and we have that. But we also have laws. And and, and um, in many subjects, they don't have laws. They, they, uh, we always had this joke about when, when I was at the university council, the people were telling this joke, uh, you know, when you appoint a new professor, you ask about uh, uh, what does he need, uh, what do we need to buy for him and so on, so that he can really start becoming a good professor at the university and so on. So the people will always say, oh, the, he's only a mathematician. Uh, <coughs> uh, he, ju he just needs a pencil <coughs> and a waste paper basket. That's all he needs. What's a waste paper basket? Uh, uh, a fringe? Hmm? I, I, I forgot it, but I, I, I know. Uh, uh, Somebody know waste paper? Where you throw your waste paper? Then? Hmm? Copain. Okay. We oui, we oui, we. Oui. Uh, <coughs> and uh, the uh, so they say. Well, he he just needs a pencil and a uh, and a waste paper basket. That's all what the professor in mm -hmm. mathematics. And it's, things have changed. P mathematicians now need computers and things like that. But at that, that time, you said, that's all they need. And then someone said, but if you appoint a philosopher, he only needs a pencil. <laughs> so, <coughs> I don't know whether you understand that. <laughs> But, but the idea is that a philosopher, if he writes something, he thinks it's right. He has no ways to check himself that that could be wrong. Uh, so so I, I was talking about a law. A law is, uh, is in physics, uh, something quite special. Uh, it is something which you should not break. Uh, in that sense, the word law is, fits nicely into what we use in, 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 in uh, I mean, a law is something which you have to honor. Uh, and if you don't, if you say, oh, I don't care about that, then you will get in trouble. And in that way, it's like a law uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the legal sense. So a law, and, and we have some very, very special laws like Newton's laws and so on. And they are really very, very important. They are basis on which we do. So if we, and we have other things. We have models and we have ways of looking at various aspects and, and have effects. And if we measure that, then there's an effect or so on. But it's not a law. It's something... Uh, uh, which you, which is special for a very small area or so on. But a law is something general, and and a law is something you should you should aim for and find out whether you can find laws which are generally true. And this is this is a very important basis of physics uh, to find to find these laws. Uh, I th physics is a huge area. There are many, many things you can, many textbooks and many branches of physics and so on. And in this course, we can't cover all of them. So we can, we can cover uh, a few areas. And I would like to do that in a uh, sort of a systematic way that we look at a sub area 
in a systematic way and in this way as we're looking at this you could actually translate, uh, transform this same method to any other field of physics. So once you've accepted the approach which we take you can say okay but now I don't want to know about this I want to know about something else but then you have a method in, according to which you, you, you do these things. So, so this is this is my plan to look at uh, what we can do in, in these three weeks. How much can we do in these three weeks? And I've chosen a specific topic uh, which we will all concentrate on for three weeks. And it's energy. Just energy. Think energy. Okay? Okay, now, I, and the way we want to do this is we want to divide you as class, and Emma has already done that, uh, divide you as, as class into 12 groups. Uh, who will all work on certain topics of energy. It's something you read in the newspapers, you hear over the radio, everything. Lots of people talk about energy, but do they know what it is? And after three weeks, we together will know what it is. Okay? We have divided this group into people who are different. I don't want all the Malagasy here together. Huh? <laughs> or all the people from Nigeria. Who's from Nigeria? The, normally quite a lot of people from Nigeria. But I don't want all the Nigerians together. That's, uh, they've got so much energy and so on. Let them share it with some of the other people. Huh? <laughs> Uh, so we would like to organize you in groups of about five, five and twelve such groups and to sit together. Uh, so we are uh, in, in groups now and uh, if the distribution is, is not 100% we can shift it around a little bit. Uh, I think they have bit too heavy there but maybe we can uh, change that but for now we leave it this way for tomorrow you can maybe rearrange a little uh, <clears throat> okay the first thing I uh, just to get you as a group going uh, I want to ask you as a group to discuss five things you know about energy And uh, so write, write something down together as a group and discuss it. Um, five things, like for instance, adjectives. Uh, uh, what, what sort of, what type of energy? Adjectives or a formula. Write down a formula and make sure you know what it means because I'll ask you <laughs> and uh, or, or use or anything you think about what comes to your mind when you think when you hear the word energy and uh, I'll give you about uh, five minutes to do that is that right about uh, huh? five minutes <laughs> to, to write to write these these points down and then I want each group, you can have a representative or you can, can two or of you can come and you write it down on the board. And then we, we find out what the different people think about energy. What is your conception of energy? It, if you have six points or seven points, also okay, if you can't, you don't need to uh, but try about five points. 
so uh, the, the comment is uh, this potential energy is uh, for a very specific case. In general, potential energy can be different depending on what, the what case we are looking at. Okay, that's, that's a fair comment. Uh, we have also different formulas for energy. We have, for instance, uh, here this one is a half mv squared, and this is uh, mgh, again, the specific one. And then we have E is equal to mc squared. Uh, now, which formula do I use? Do I use that one, or do I use this one? <laughs> huh? I'm asking you, when do I do what? Uh, any other comments? Uh, I, th I think you, you, most of you have, uh, have, have similar ideas about what energy is. Uh, so we have here the ability to do, uh, to do work. Everybody seems to think that, uh, most of you th seem to think that is what energy is. No, I don't, but... <laughs> Uh, but but uh, it is something which I can understand that that that's what you think it is. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, then uh, this question about force times distance uh, was uh, somebody was complaining about that. Uh, I won't complain about that because it's a specific form of energy which is called work. And uh, so, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's okay. For, in, in a very specific way, uh, because energy could be, work is also energy. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll talk about all these things. Then the units here, then we have nicely here electrical energy. We will not talk about electrical energy in general here because there will be a course on, on electromagnetism later. And electromagnetism is actually a beautiful subject. Uh, but I think if you, you can mess it up too if you don't handle it properly. And the, you get a, an extremely good lecturer by the name of... Uh, Robert de Mello Koch, who will come later. He is, he's, he's one of the, the best lecturers I know because uh, he's a string theorist, which is very abstract, but he can tell you everything from, from the space basics up to the string theory. He can talk on any of these levels. And he's a reasonably young man, and uh, uh, he will do electricity uh, uh, with you, and uh, we'll discuss all these things. So I won't talk about electrical energy. Mechanical energy, we will talk a lot, and, and these are these formulas. Solar energy, we'll talk about. Chemical energy, we'll talk about. And uh, nuclear energy as well. Uh, whether nuclear energy is renewable or not renewable is sort of uh, open to debate. Uh, the problems which people have with, with nuclear energy is not that it is not renewable, but because of potential dangers uh, uh, in, 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 in nuclear energy. But we'll talk about that. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, renewable energy solar, yeah. Uh, then we have, uh, again, these. Uh, this, is, this is an important thing uh, in and, and, and these formulas. And SI units. Here we get that again. Uh, uh, energy, oh yeah, now yeah, we have energy conservation. 
Uh, we'll talk a lot about energy conservation. Uh, that energy is conserved. So it's actually strange to say renewable. If it's conserved, it's always there. So how do you renew it or something? I mean, so the terminology is a bit <coughs> problem. Uh, but conservation of energy is an important concept, which we'll talk about. And in general, conservation laws, laws of conservation, something is conserved. You see, if something is conserved, I'm not a conservative, so don't get me wrong, <laughs> but if something is conserved, then it's always there. You don't lose it. But we will sometimes have the impression we lose energy, and we will have to understand what we mean by conservation of energy. Uh, <clears throat> so that is an important topic. Conservation laws uh, cannot be, cannot stipulate energy cannot end and can't get, you can't get it from nothing. Uh, different sources of uh, energy, solar and electrical again, transformation, renewable, photovoltaic, that's a specific way of uh, doing uh, uh, solar energy. Here's, a, here's an interesting one, heat. Is heat energy? Hmm? Yes, very much so. Very much so. Life, I don't know. <laughs> Transforming energy. This formula again, type of energies. Water, so this is hydro, hydro energy, we call that. Uh, from sun, from wind, from nuclear, and energy is the capacity to do work. Uh, uh, you must tell me now if there are things which I don't want to go through everything because there's lots of... Uh, can you help me a little? Fossil fuels, that's a very important topic. Uh, Africa has lots of fossil fuels. But should we just burn them? Talk about it. Uh, anything else, Emma? Can you or of the other tutors? I don't. I can't go through every, those which are, skip those which are, we have. Gravitational constant G. Oh, that's energy. Uh, Energy, the ability to do work, energy, kinetic, and... Uh, let's do this one. This is a very long one. Energy. Neither, well, it's conservation of energy. There are different forms. Okay, we have them here. And there's now sources, nuclear, solar. They are almost all of those we will be talking about. Very important that people know what we're going to talk about. Uses, cooking, lightning, and industrial transport, and kinetic energy, and there are some formulas for that. Uh, we've talked about work over time. That is, that's wrong. Uh, so let's not talk about it further. Um, physical concept. What does it mean? As energy is a physical concept. Does it mean you can touch it, or? <laughs> hmm? It can be measured. It's if something appears in physics in the whole way we think about physics. I'm not really. I don't worry about that. Uh, although I can see that. 
energy is defined, the force and unit of energy, joule, and so you know a lot about units already. Energy is the ability, conserved quantity. Okay. Uh, I think we need, we need to, to take a break. Yeah? Uh, so we'll take a break for, what is it, five minutes? Five minutes. And after that I will, I will continue this discussion. But well done, guys, this is well done. Uh, you know more about energy than I thought you did. Okay, uh, so we've, we've talked about energy. Now I want to <clears throat> just talk a little more about it. Uh, and uh, I, would, I want to assume this is a pound of butter. Uh, a kilogram, not a pound, a kilogram. One kilo of butter, which I have in my hand. And I hold it this way. It's about a meter. So, how much is the energy? And so I hold it about one meter from the ground. So what is the energy? Hmm? Okay, write it down here somewhere. Well, 9.8 you say? Joules. 9.8 joules. Okay, say about 10 joules because I didn't measure it so accurately. This height, say it's about 10 joules. Huh? Okay? Uh, now I take the butter and I look on the label. And it says, on the label it says 37 megajoules. <clears throat> That's what the label tells me. And you say it's 10 joules. So is the label wrong? Or what is the point? I think the 10 joules is the one type of energy that you are. Uh, it's like the weight that, uh, that you are making at that point in time, that in terms of potential. But the, se uh, the 7 joules is the chemical energy inside Me the butter itself. Megajoules, yeah. Mega joules, yeah. And so it's much, much more than the energy which the potential, uh, which I have there. Hmm? So this is, uh, so you understand this, this energy, if I talk about this thing, whether it has energy, I can think of it in different ways. I can think of it as the potential energy, and I hold this butter and this has 10, 10 joules, and I drop it, and now I've lost my energy. Because there's nothing there. It's no joule, I've lost the 10 joules. Huh? Okay? But you tell me energy is conserved. <coughs> and I lost it. I could have actually. <coughs> Not drop it, but have a little uh, have have a little uh, mechanism of dr uh, lowering it slowly and and driving a generator and and making a light of it and so on. But I just dropped it, and I lost it. I haven't lost it. What? Why haven't I lost it? The sound. Okay. It's converted into sound. So, uh, so in this, this example we see uh, that this energy, the way I look at it, it could be sound, it could be heat, it could be many things. Huh? But as, as I look at it, uh, this energy is 10 joules here, and I drop it, and I lost this this ability to do work. 
because I could have, as I said, I could have had a little trolley uh, uh, and, and I, I could, I could r run a generator with it and I could have made electricity with it. But now I dropped it, now it lies down there, I cannot make that electricity anymore. So I've lost something, but I haven't lost energy as she tells me. And I hope she's right. Is she right? Okay, <clears throat> so that's something we will need to understand better. How can you, how does energy, what are the different forms of energy and how does it uh, go from one form into another? She said it goes into sound. We all heard it drop. Uh, but it can also go into other things like deformation of the system and, 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 and lots of things. But it goes away, it's away, but it's, it's, not, it's still there. Uh, so, so, but you must be worried a little bit about conservation of energy, if I can lose it so quickly. And worry, is it really, is it really in the sound? Do I know that? And things like that. Now the next thing I want to ask you now is, uh, I see a formula up there, E is equal to mc squared. So let's apply that to my, to my uh, uh, kilogram of butter. Uh, so what is m? It's 1. And c is 3 times 10 to the power 8. And this I have to square and then I get joules. And that is equal to 9 times 10 to the power 16 joules. I mean, I was first talking about 10 joules, and then I was talking about 37 times 10 to the power 6 joules. And now I'm at 9 times 10 to the power 16 joules. That's an enormous factor. So, so is this true? Is this formula wrong? I mean, how can it be this? How can I get this value? Total energy content, okay. So, but if I want to use that, if I want that energy, I want to drive my car or something, I need energy. So, where do, and, I, and I've got, with the butter, I can, uh, I can at least uh, uh, melt it and, and make it a, a fuel. I can burn a candle, uh, I can burn light with it. Uh, if butter is oil, it, it burns. Uh, it'll burn for, uh, for, for a lot, long time, uh, this. So I know that there is lots of chemical energy in there. Uh, but this energy, hmm? nuclear, energy. nuclear energy, so what does that mean? Uh, talk, uh, it, it just speak up loudly of a small thing. Uh, and it, the energy is, but the, my, my problem is not the small thing, my problem is the, the large thing, the large energy. <laughs> huh? So, so how, could I, how could I use this? Or can't I use it? Do you think that would help? 
<laughs> but it is actually, your formula tells me this is the energy I have. You say I have to add a lot of energy. I, I actually want to know this is the energy which you tell me I have. And, but I want to use it. So how can I use it? I, I was telling you, I, I have 10 joules and I have 37 megajoules with a pound of butter. Now how can I use the 37 megajoules? I can do two things, two different things. I can eat the pound of butter and then I have a lot of <coughs> energy and then I can <laughs> turn a wheel. <laughs> okay? So, so I can transform that energy into a useful, useful way by eating it. Eh? Uh, and that's why they put it on the, on, on the butter. They tell me how much energy it gives me uh, when I eat it. Eh? But I also know that uh, for a, uh, a liter of uh, oil, that number is the same because oil and butter are not so different. Eh? The number is the same. And so I can actually put it in my car and I can drive with it. Or I can make a candle which has, which has uh, uh, oil in it and I can light that candle and I can burn the whole night and I can study. So, so I can use that energy. Okay? So that, that I'm happy with and I hope you are happy with. Huh? You can use it. But this It's so much, if we had this, I would give you a pound of, my pound of butter and then we would have enough energy for, for as long as I live and as long as you live. Huh? Uh, so, so, how can I get hold of this? What is the mechanism to get it? So, so the, the mechanism actually uh, to take um, material and take anti-material with it. If I take a kilogram of butter and you give me a kilogram of anti-butter, this is anti-matter, and I put them together, then I would get an explosion of energy enormously and it would be this. So it's, it's actually the energy which I get, this energy formula here is the energy content of the matter. If I have that matter and I'm prepared to give up that matter, I just get rid of it and I transform it into energy, then this is the, the you know, and the, the only way you can do it is by, and you are correct, uh, you, you actually explained the process of taking piece by piece uh, a proton and an antiproton and so on and, and add them all together and then you get that. Uh, but uh, I, I'm uh, more practical, I just say I take a pound of anti-butter which unfortunately the supermarket doesn't sell but uh, if I had that then I could do that. Okay, so, so the, 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 the point I would try to make here is uh, that if we, if we think of the energy content uh, of anything, we actually have to think about the, uh, the process in which we will transform it into a way in which we actually want to, the energy to use it, uh, to use. I, I just see question marks and faces. Uh, do you want to ask questions? Yes. What is antimatter? Who knows? Well, maybe I can try to just. Uh, maybe it was unfair to talk to antimatter if you haven't uh, heard of it. Uh, but let me just say one of the most uh, most interesting things that happened 
uh, in the 1930s, it's long ago, there was a person called uh, Dirac. And he formulated a theory of the electron. Electron is a small piece, a particle that is responsible for, uh, for, for the current, electrical current. Huh? And so electrons have been known for a long time, uh, from Maxwell's time and long before that. People knew about electrons. Uh, but Dirac formulated a relativistic theory, which we will not do at all. Uh, and in that theory, uh, the wonderful thing that happened is there was a symmetry between an electron and some other particle, which was called the positron. So the electron had a negative charge, but uh, he predicted there must be a particle like the electron which has a positive charge. And, uh, and it's called the positron. So we have the electron and the positron. And the point of the theory is that if you, if you bring the electron and the positron together, they're both gone and you get gamma rays, which is electromagnetic waves. You just get energy. So, so this electron we call matter, part of matter, and the positron is part of antimatter. Now this uh, was at that time, I think, a wonderful experience of the, the power of physical and mathematical reasoning. Uh, which, uh, which Dirac showed. He actually said this theory must be, is so beautiful it must be true. And he believed in it. And then the experimentalists went and they looked and they did experiments and then they found the positron. And in the, in the meantime, uh, over there, that was in the 1930s, 1932, I think, was Dirac's paper. And the posit uh, positron was found very quickly afterwards. Uh, I'm not sure about the date, but a few years later. And, uh, <clears throat> and afterwards, uh, the idea spread that any particle uh, must have an, have an antiparticle or any, well, yeah, all particles have anti, anti if, I don't want to get too, uh, must have antiparticles. And so there was later found a proton, and a proton was found, and there's an antiproton, and there's a neutron, and there's an antineutron. And, uh, and uh, uh, if you think of it, then uh, here's a Fritz, and there's somewhere an antifritz. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's made up of exactly the same way, uh, but uh, all the particles are uh, particles are antiparticles. Yes. What's the mass of a kilogram of antibutter? The same as the mass of, of butter. So that formula is actually equal to. That if well, I would actually say, you see, if I have a have a, a kilogram of butter and you have a kilogram of, uh, of anti-butter, I would say, uh, let's come and, and I'll give you this and you give me that and I'll take mine and that will be that and you can take yours which is the same, it's the same amount. And so what he's actually saying is there's twice as much, which is correct. Uh, <coughs> is it, uh, Yes. <laughs> uh, 
So the question was, if we can't buy antimatter, where can we get it? <clears throat> now, antimatter can be made uh, in, in accelerators, like at CERN. Have you heard about CERN? Uh, Uh, which is in, in Switzerland. It's a big place where they recently had an experiment where they think they, they found the Higgs boson. Have you, have you read this? You read, you read things of science in, in, uh, on the internet? You can, today there's no excuse saying my newspaper doesn't supply anymore. You don't need to read your newspaper. You just, you just, uh, Google it. Huh? it <laughs> you just Google and you, uh, you put in Higgs boson on Google uh, and there will be lots of information. I'm afraid, as I read most of you, now uh, you will find it a little different, uh, difficult at this stage uh, to read uh, about the Higgs boson. But, uh, but this is where, where they make. But they make a lot of antimatter. They make a lot of antimatter, but it doesn't last very long because it, 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 uh... Is the public lecture tomorrow night about the Higgs boson? Here. Or here? Yeah. Okay. And we have a team from the Higgs boson if you're interested in finding out more. Yes. Uh, and, uh... Do you think he will talk about soon? Can one entice him to do that? To yeah, he will probably talk about it. And uh, uh, so, so antimatter is, uh, the, well, it is actually one of the difficult questions, open questions, that means questions that have not been answered, is why is there only matter here? And why don't we have a... Uh, a planet with antimatter or, or have a sun somewhere at, with antimatter, in principle that would be possible. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, our universe as we see it, and, and people look very, very far into the universe, uh, as we see it, it, is, it just has matter in it. And the little pieces of antimatter which are made from time to time, they very quickly uh, collide with matter and then they're gone. They, they transformed into energy. Okay? Uh, so I was, I was just trying to... Uh, ex yeah. Uh, sorry, I've, I've lost the thread. Uh, where, where was the last point? Uh, Yes, yes, uh, the nuclear energy is, is if, you do nuclear, if you do calculations in nuclear energy uh, and you, you want to calculate the energy uh, in a reactor or in a nuclear bomb or in anything, you use this formula. Uh, and... Uh, it actually, what you actually do in a nuclear reaction is you give up some matter, you, you lose some matter by putting it into, making it energy, You're using exactly that formula. But the things we will be concerned with will be mostly on the chemical level, where we use, where we use this uh, the chemistry, uh, the the elect uh, the energy which the chemistry uh, produces. So. Okay, I think uh, can we stop here? This I, I want. To, uh, I think we need to uh, quickly get. Otherwise, we don't get this done before. The idea now is that we will work in groups on different problems.
We will discuss the problems just now. Uh, and I will lecture in between and, and provide some background for the different things which you will need to look at your problems. So we are going to do, the course is a course on, on problem solving and the way I think a problem is, a problem is a real problem. And let me look at it this way. Let us assume uh, Dr. Ntlamini Zuma. Who knows who's Dr. Ntlamini Zuma? One. Two. Who's Dr. Ntlamini Zuma? She's leading the AU. She's leading the AU and she's a South African. Okay? She's the head of the... Let's assume she, she, she says uh, the, the, uh, the Chinese want to sell us a lot of this, this stuff and the Americans want to sell us fossil fuels and these guys um, want to... Uh, the uh, French want to sell us uh, nuclear reactors and so on. Now what should we do? And she writes to us and she says, advise me. Huh? Okay? This is our problem, we must advise her, and we must, uh, this is a play, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a game. Huh? And now we, we think about what is the best uh, energy uh, policy for Africa. Okay? So, I, there was, uh, I don't have time to talk too much uh, to, uh, about it too much, but there was a person who had uh, lectured here, uh, who I'll talk to uh, next time when we meet, uh, and uh, he actually did a, he was an uh, energy advisor for the British government, and he wrote a book on the policy of, uh, on, on, on energy for Britain. And I want to say, well, let's write something on energy for Africa. And you are all going to do that. Okay? This will be our project. And so we have divided it into many, many projects. And uh, there are 15 of those. Uh, and so what I'd like you to do is, as a group, uh, to pick one topic. Uh, you pick, pick one topic and then uh, work as a group on that topic. And the tutors will help you, I will help you, and I'll give some lectures uh, about some of the uh, background material you need and so on. So the first topic is uh, l light. Light emission and absorption and black body radiation. Do you know what that is? Black body radiation. Hmm? You know what the black body is? Uh, corps noir. Uh, and the uh, uh, so 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 it it's uh, it is actually a the best model for the light which is produced by the sun and by many things uh, and it's the way radiation uh, you see the sun is up there and it's burning uh, all the time and its light comes here and we catch up this light and this gives us energy okay this is how it works and the way it happens is with something called black body radiation. And also, the way anything uh, spreads, I mean, how when we lose energy, we do it also with black body radiation. And that is a very interesting topic. It was actually the basis for the uh, for quantum mechanics, for quantum mechanics to, uh, to be formulated by Max Planck, uh, was the problem to do black body radiation. It's a beautiful little theory which 
those which you will be able to do and explain it to others. It's something which, uh, uh, which one can actually do the calculations for quite, quite easily. Okay, then the, uh, discuss the, uh, that's one, one topic which you can choose. You can talk to me and to the tutors about it later. Uh, discuss the radiation energy of the sun and its uh, distribution across the earth. You know, everybody in Europe is these days using uh, uh, solar collectors and, and, and uh, uh, try to uh, get their energy from the sun. But they have no sun. I mean, uh, the, the little sun they have. <laughs> but they nevertheless use it. We've got lots of it. Huh? We know. And you go into the desert and it's just sun, sun, wherever you are. But we don't use it. So, uh, let's, so the idea is what is the distribution of, uh, of the, uh, the solar energy across the earth? And why is it that way? And so on. The next project is to discuss uh, the temperature of a planet, including our own planet, the earth. What determines the temperature of a planet? Uh, it gets energy uh, uh, from the sun, but it also loses energy. And in this way, uh, its temperature is stabilized at a certain form. And what are the different uh, factors? The Earth also gets energy not just from the sun, but also from radioactive uh, decay and other <coughs> things. So, so you can just look at all the factors that determine the temperature of the earth and you know uh, uh, people are talking about uh, global warming everything that the temperature of the earth rises and so on what's the reason and so on okay uh, and then the next uh, is the discuss the reserves uh, of fossil fuels and why are they, why are they, are they there? And what are the time spans in which they were collected? I mean, we just go and burn this, these fossil fuels, which is coal and oil and, uh, and gas. And uh, at some point there won't be any. So it's really not fair to our great-grandchildren uh, they won't have that fossil we will have burnt it all of it uh, so it's not sustainable you know the word sustainable you can't keep on doing that forever you can't sustain it it's not sustainable but we are using it at the moment. Uh, it's, it's the best way we can, we can operate. But we need to think about other ways. Then discuss renewable energies, new things like biofuels, photosynthesis, uh, and chemical processes, and particularly the use of hydrogen. How you can produce hydrogen and how you can burn hydrogen or, or use it to, to get other forms of energy. Uh, then describe uh, wind energy for electricity generation. Uh, these days if you look at TV from Europe you see all these mills, you see them everywhere and you see them also here in the, in the uh, close to Cape Town. Uh, using energy from from uh, from uh, wind to uh, <clears throat> to produce electricity, uh, uh, it is actually using uh, wind as an old thing. We've been using windmills for a long time to pump water or. or or in, in Europe, they, and also here to some extent, they were used to grind, uh, grind corn and, and things like that. Uh, so, so we've been using wind a lot, but this is now a much, very much more uh, concerted effort. 
Uh, then descri uh, describe wind energy, yeah, and discuss uh, uh, discuss the uh, concentration of thermal energy from the sun. Why would you want to do that? Why do you want to concentrate it to make something very hot? And why? How do things work? Uh, if you use heat from the sun to, to produce electricity, what are the things you need to think about? Uh, that, is, that is that topic. Then there's photovoltaic electricity. The, these are the, all these plates which are lying around and you can get, uh, the sun shines on there and you get electricity and they can be used. And uh, I will uh, give a bit of a lecture on uh, on the uh, formation, how the electricity is actually produced in these plates and so on, but uh, that would be uh, something you could, on, in these cells, in these uh, 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 photovoltaic cells. Do you know the term photovoltaic? Hmm? Photo, uh, light, voltaic is has to do with volts. Volt it produces electricity, so you 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 producing electricity from the sun shining onto uh, onto a cell, and the, and uh, the and that is uh, at the moment one of the, the big ways of, of uh, producing electricity. Uh, then uh, discuss hydroelectric potential. That you know, huh? there are many countries in Africa. Uh, we look at the rivers in Africa, and how do you get electricity from the running of the rivers and from uh, from the sea? Uh, and uh, and the waves, the waves of the sea, and the and the tides. You know what a tide is. En français, marée. Uh, so it comes in and goes out. And where does that originally come from? Okay, and then uh, uh, domestic use. We had this already. Someone uh, cooking and heating and a uh, role of heat pumps and heating and cooling in general. How, how can you use uh, how, how can you use heat more directly without going through electricity, but just doing it more directly? Uh, then the energy uses in transport. How can you have better cars, better buses, better trains, motorbikes, aircraft, and all these things? Uh, then nuclear energy, and there are basically two processes a nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Now nuclear fusion is bringing two nuclei together, two light nuclei together, and they bind and they give off energy. And that is the generator of the energy, most of the energy of the sun, comes through nuclear fusion. And now we have been starting for, uh, we've been busy for a long time already in the world and also in South Africa of having a nuclear reactors. They are actually working on nuclear fission where you take a uh, uh, nuclear and you break them up and that also gives energy. And to understand why you sometimes get energy by breaking them up and sometimes by putting them together and all these things you can discuss very nicely uh, uh, if, if, you, if you pick that, that topic. Uh, then there's geothermal energy. Uh, that is uh, when, when the earth plates move and so on and there's uh, the earth down, but very deep down is, is very hot and can't you use that energy uh, to uh, to produce uh, electricity or, or, or use it in any other way. Uh, so that's geothermal energy. 
And then the last topic I, I just thought was interesting is uh, particularly in, in uh, more an a, uh, economic problem, uh, uh, particularly in Africa. Uh, should we just copy what they do in America and so on and have these large lines of electricity lines going through everywhere and taking electricity and so on? Uh, can't we design uh, smaller units uh, where the electricity uh, is used in, the, in, a, in a local community and, ha and have stability of electricity uh, by the management of the community itself rather than have a supplier who gets all sorts of problems and sometimes there, there's no electricity. <coughs> uh, who has problems with electricity at home? Hands up. I, I'm a South African, I also have problems. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's terrible. Huh? Uh, we, uh, how can we work? You want to study and then you, you have no electricity. And so, so we need stability, we need all these things. And uh, a place like Ames has to do uh, with providing uh, an infrastructure in which we can all work very efficiency, efficiently. But for that we need cheap energy. We need to, I mean how many people, if you go into the countryside and you, you see people, women mainly, going and, and picking wood and carrying it to, to uh, uh, to make a fire for, for, the, for the cooking and then they again have to go to the river and they pick water and they bring the water uh, to, have, uh, to, to prepare the food. I mean that takes a whole day of a person's, person's life. Uh, you know a whole day is fully f with these sort of... Uh, you can't expect those people to do anything else because this is, they're fully employed by what they do. And so what we actually need, and, and, and actually the, the, the advancement of, uh, of Europe and other places has been the efficient use of, of uh, infrastructure. The, the way of being able to just switch on and cook your coffee while you think and while you sit at the computer and everything, you, you can do all these things uh, gathering your food is actually a secondary uh, effort for most people. I've overrun my time by quite a bit. So this is the list. Uh, maybe we can set it up next time again and uh, just check whether the students want to ask some questions. So each group must please, in a democratic way, we are a democratic continent, <laughs> pick, a, pick, a, pick a topic <clears throat> and, uh, and, and then uh, give it to Emma and, and, and come and discuss with me, I'll be around here, uh, I'll sometimes even sleep over here, but I live in Stellenbosch. Tonight I'm going back, uh, but uh, otherwise I'll sometimes be here in the evening also. And you can come to me and talk to me anytime you want about anything. Okay? Anything. What about the size of the project? How many pages are I think uh, we said about two pages, Emma, did we? Yeah. Uh, we don't really want you to, we want you to work on this. And we don't really want to write you to write a very, very long thing. And we also, it would have been nice had you already done more of your LaTeX and things like that. But write it by hand. Eh? If you want to start off and LaTeX a little bit and, uh, you, uh, and you get uh, half a page done, and uh, then you just can't do it anymore. 
uh, then just stop there and, and write the rest by hand. Eh? It's, it's, uh, we, won't, we won't really look at the production so much. The very important thing is that you, you learn something about it and you learn how to work with scientific material. And uh, uh, at the end of the last, uh, we'll give, uh, uh, we'll have some lectures. Will will be will be more of a discussion group where you come here and you you discuss among yourselves and or uh, or elsewhere, and you discuss with us. But on the in the last week, uh, I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, we'll have to discuss, but at at least for two hours, maybe three. Uh, we would like you uh, to present what you've done. And, and this is also very important, to be able to present and say, we have done this. And the way you organize it, uh, we can also talk about. Uh, I had this idea that maybe uh, we could have uh, a main presenter who, who does, say, talk for five minutes and then everybody adds a point to it. So that, I, for me it is the most important thing that everybody works on it. And I don't want a group with a guy who knows everything and he writes a beautiful thing and they, this is the group thing. Everybody in that group must subscribe to what is being said, uh, okay? We can talk about uh, such things as we go along. Yes? Uh, since we are many groups and the, the, the topics are also there, uh, it might happen that one topic is being done by two groups. How are you going to make sure that? Well, let's see how it happens. Uh, le let's see. Uh, we, I, I, I didn't want to make a rule that it cannot happen, you know? Uh, I think also uh, the maybe we can just say, well, why don't you take that uh, emphasis more on that, and this other group takes the emphasis more on that. Uh, in any case, uh, a lot of the topics, uh, a, a lot of groups will have overlapping uh, interests. For instance, most of you uh, will want to know uh, something about black body radiation. You will have to. Uh, uh, because uh, it is it is the driving thing uh, behind the sun, uh, the, the way uh, 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 the uh, energy from the sun comes here. Uh, so so there. Uh, but uh, let let us just go and do it. And uh, I believe in flexibility. Uh, and uh, I don't want you to give you a topic where you feel, oh, I don't want to do this, and I can't do it, and so on. Uh, we, we'll rather discuss and see how we can manage it, okay?